The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to join our Let's Learn Futures Derivative webinar. And this webinar is brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and managed by LiveChain. Us, all right. And uh, my name is Shen Chu. I'm the moderator for this webinar. And uh, I want to, first of all, take the opportunity to thank all of you for tuning in uh, in today's webinar. And this is the first webinar that we do in 2019. And I am very glad that you all took all your time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. And I promise you that uh, we will do everything within our power to make it well worth your time. Now, today we will be talking about advanced trading technique, spread trading. And if you are, have not heard of spread trading, then uh, this will be a good session uh, to, to learn about how a full-time trader like our honorable guest uh, speaker today, CC Yong, has made a good living from trading this uh, very, this is a, a best kept secret of a futures trading technique in the future trading world. So today, he is going to reveal to you how he used this strategy and make a living for himself and also for his team, okay? Um, and this webinar is 90 minutes long and uh, 60 minutes is content and we'll leave the last 30 minutes for the question and answer sessions. Now, before I go on further, I just wanna check if you can hear me, okay? Now, if you can hear me and see my screen, can you please click the raise the hand button? Okay, if you can hear me and uh, see my screen, and please click raise the hand button. Okay, all right. I'm seeing a lot of hands right now. Thank you very much. You may put down your hands right now. Thank you. Thank you for participating. All right, uh, we are really excited to have you on board with us today. Now we have uh, a series of uh, webinar in store for you this year for both uh, futures and also equity market. So please stay tuned with us. Now, as usual, disclaimer, and this is the perhaps the most important slide. Whatever we share in this webinar is only for educational purpose. So in no way that Live Cham or the speaker Strix uh, Index or Bursa Malaysia is liable for any of the decisions, financial decisions that you make. So uh, please remember this. And for the derivatives webinar, I've told you we have a series of uh, derivatives webinar in store for you for the whole 2019. And guess what? All these webinars are made free to you, complimentary, no charge, and all gratis. Okay, so that means you don't have to pay any single cent to join any of these webinars because it has all been sponsored by Bursa Malaysia Derivative. So the first session today, we will be talking about trading technique, spread trading. In the next month, we're talking about introduction to futures concept. In the month of March, uh, the topics are still being finalized, but subsequently, we still have a lot of session for you from in Mandarin, in English, and in different topics, including risk management and FKR and FCPO. So these are our programs for the whole year for you. So please stay tuned. So long that you follow the entire series, you will be a fine uh, futures trader. So, Today, uh, it gave me a great honor to introduce our speaker today, and he's already online, uh, uh, Mr. C.C. Yong. He is a full-time trader, and he's also a local participant of Bursa Malaysia Derivatives. Lo uh, local participant means that uh, on one month, uh, they have to trade at least 1,000 lots, okay, for contract size. So this is uh, something really huge, okay? So how he managed to do that, uh, maybe uh, he can share with you a bit later, okay? by using this strategy called spread trading. He is also a founder and managing director of Strix Index. Uh, it, it is a proprietary trading company and associate participant of Bursa Malaysia Derivative. So his website is www.strixindex.com. Uh, since he's a full-time trader, that means if he don't make money from trading, right, then he cannot feed his family. Really. That means this is really a serious career for him. And uh, considering that he has been doing this for so long, so he has been... Uh, will be likely to be a uh, hugely profitable huh? so from using this strategy. So today, we are very honored to have him to share with you how he can make uh, his fortune by using spread trading strategy in the futures market. So now I want to pass it over to you, CC. Okay. I'm making you the presenter right now. 
Okay, all right. Okay, good evening and thank you, uh, Shane. So uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, let's start with, uh, oh. Okay, um, today I'm going to um, talk about spread trading. Spread trading is, is, is a technique of, you know, futures trading, especially. Um, the definitions of spread trading is, you know, the spread trade is actually also called relative value uh, trade, which the spread trades are the act of purchasing one security and sell another. So it can be any type of asset. Lah. So and usually spread trades are done with, you know, options and futures contract, which are available in Bursa, Malaysia. And these trades are executed um, to produce an overall net trade with a positive value or can be a negative as well. And we call it spread. And spreads are priced as a unit or as a pace uh, in future exchanges to ensure that simultaneously you, know, you buy and you're selling a, a security or futures contract. Doing so actually eliminates uh, execution risk uh, where one part of the pairs execute but another part fails. Uh. So this is actually a um, uh, benefit of uh, trading spread, especially for, for the, with the exchange, uh, with spread codes. Now, um, there's majority, actually, there's three types of spread. Uh, first is actually intermarket spreads. Uh, you know, there's two markets, but you can do a spread uh, uh, for these two instruments. Uh, for example, we have FKI and FM70 uh, futures index which you can do a spread trading with this as well, which I'm going to talk about this. And uh, intraday market spreads or counter spread, which you are trading contracts of two or different uh, months uh, in the same uh, instrument or exchange. Thirdly, is actually in the exchanges like crude palm oil in BMD and then uh, you know in Malaysia and then maybe soybean oil in Seaboard US. So you can actually trade cross border as well, which is a spread trading. Of course, there's more spreads, uh, but basically we'll focus on the first two, which is intermarket spreads and also uh, intramarket spread. Um, now, um, hedging and outright right position, it's actually what spread are doing. You know, you, you can actually use spread to hedge a position. Hedging a position means, let's say you may be, um, when you trade outright means you're buying a stock or you're selling a futures, you know, with directional in nature. We call it um, uh, our right position. So let's say, for example, you buy stocks, but then suddenly the market turns sour and, 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 and coming down. So what you can do, you can actually sell indices, let's say, for example, futures index of FKI or also futures index like FM70. So by selling opposite uh, directions uh, instruments, you are actually hedging the our right position. That means you buy stock, sell index futures. That's how you do hedging. Um, also, you can also hedge a spread position. That means you buy a spread, you can also hedge by selling a spread. You know, you have a spread on a spread. And overall, um, uh, oh, sorry, roll over and outright position. That means you have a position that you are holding and you like to actually roll it to another month. Let's say, for example, you, are, you, are, you, are, you might be trading uh, January, but you want your position to move over to February. You can actually roll over in our position by using spread. Um, last but not least is actually you do a counter trend trading. That means trading spread sometimes you you go against the, the trend. That means uh, when market is actually going up, you may be the one selling and market is coming down, you may be the one buying. So if you want to try something opposite with uh, the major trend, you could have been, you know, try to trade spread as well. Now, what is popular in uh, BMD? Uh, the popular spread in BMD is actually FKI and FM70, and also candle spread like FCPO and FKI. Why is actually popular, but may be may not be heard by everyone because uh, there's not many uh, discussion about spread because you know usually it was used by uh, full time traders, but actually uh, I have some advantages that actually I can share it to you later on. It's actually you. Almost like everyone can trade spreads. Of course, you, you need to have some uh, kickstarts, like know widespread and how it can be done. Uh. 
So this is what um, tonight uh, the webinar is all about. So why not we start with uh, an example of intermarket spread first, which is if you're familiar with uh, futures market of Malaysia, everybody knows FKI. They are the um, uh, futures contract of our KLCI. So it called FKI. And recently we have a new uh, futures index called FM70. And this is the futures index that uh, representing both top 100 stocks in Malaysia, uh, Bursa Malaysia. So FKI is actually represented by top 30 counters and FM70 is actually the top 31st to 100. So total of 70 counters were for FM70. Now, if you pair FKI with FM70, it will form a spread, right? But when you pair means you buy, let's say one leg, you sell the other. You can't buy FKI or long FKI and long FM70. You must actually either long F FKI and then sell FM70 or you do it opposite, you short FKI, then you long FM70. That's, that's called spread. You must have an opposite direction, although there are different uh, uh, markets. And this is a whole new spread trading strategy which uh, enable traders uh, to explore to a new horizon of, you know, in terms of trading. Uh, by actually the structure of uh, the top 100 stock, you can see on the left-hand side, from top one to 30 stock, you form FBM KNCI, and also subsequently, uh, it was the underlying asset and form FKI. And on the right-hand side is actually top 30, first to 100. So this, um, mid 70 counters are uh, which is actually form or actually is the underlying asset of fm70 futures index so these two index you can actually trade it now uh, i can show this is one of the screen um, uh, uh, i'm actually traded before so you can actually short let's say fm70 right september uh, 19 uh, 2018 and then fki september 2018 so uh, plus one is actually a long position. Huh? Here is actually a long position. So what I do is actually I form a, a, a spread, okay? And I close this position by doing opposite uh, on the other day. And you can see the profit is actually, now in spread trading, the things goes weird is, you know, when you make money, let's say FK, I, I make money, 875 ringgit. But at the same time, this FM70, I actually make a loss which is minus um, 392 ringgit. But at the end of the day, the total profit uh, uh, or, or P&L uh, is actually about positive 483 ringgit. That means you lose certain side, but that you also make on the other side, then that is a total profit. You have to add it up. Now, um, this uh, research has done by a friend of mine, John Q. Um, he has done a, a, a research uh, and testing. Uh, if you want to do a perfect hedge on FKI and FM70 spread hedging ratio, uh, the perfect hedge is supposed to be you actually long or short three lots of FKI, but you need seven lots uh, uh, of FM70 futures uh, to do a hedge. Let's say you long three, then you short seven. But of course, the mine is actually calculated based on uh, one to one net ratio. This is actually in terms of you want to be almost direct and linear uh, hedging. And, and this is done actually from 2006 to 2018. Now, um, but when you trading futures, uh, one of the important thing is uh, you need to be uh, aware of margin requirement. So in this case, a spend margin price is actually 4,000 previously. Today, actually starting from today, the, the margin actually start to increase uh, to 5,000 due to probably Chinese New Year uh, holidays. Um, and FM70 was actually 800 only, all right? So how to calculate this margin? For spread trading, um, margin, a way of margin difference from normally what you do is important because margin required usually is actually slightly lower, okay? The margin for FM70 is actually 800 per, per, per direction or per, per side, all right? And the spot spread margin is actually 200 per pair and back one was 100 pair. But this is actually FM70 margin. 
But what if if I do an inter-market spread? When you're doing an inter-market spread, you only need to pay 40% of the uh, margin. In this case, it's 4,000 uh, plus 800. Uh, uh, multiplied by 40%, you get nine, uh, 1,920. And of course, now it's actually slightly 200, bring it more due to the uh, uh, increase in margin. But roughly, you can see, rather than you pay 4,008 for two futures contract, you are actually paying only 40% of the margin, which is 1,920. Okay, this is actually um, what uh, intermarket spread uh, can be done. And with that, actually, we also go to a, one of the most in, uh, important and interesting uh, spread we call calendar spread. Now, calendar spread is actually you buy and sell contracts expired in a different month in the same exchange. As you know, option and futures all have expiration uh, date. Okay, the expiration date usually is actually a calendar month. So, whenever one calendar month expires, that will be replaced by one. But uh, usually, uh, these contracts uh, or, or any instrument has got many, many months of contracts uh, available. Let's say, for example, uh, now you will have February for um, uh, CPO, March, April, for, for FKI because it's spot month trading until end of the month. So you will have January, February, March, April, May, June. You know, oh, sorry, FKI, you have only January, February, and then March, and then there will be uh, June. Uh, there's no May, uh, okay? But for SCPO, they, you will have February, March, April, May, June, July, and so on and so forth, okay? I'll show you in the diagram so that it's easier for you to understand. Now, spread trading actually provides liquidity for traders and hedgers, means um, there will be a lot of volumes actually uh, can be traded, right? So you buy, Example, you buy November and sell December contract actually uh, make a calendar spread. We probably to discuss uh, CPO, usually we'll do a calendar spread. Uh, uh, we discuss in CPO because they have many, many contracts available for CPO. Lah. All right. Now, uh, you can long a January CPO contract. Okay. Then you can hedge by selling uh, February's FCPO. This will form a January, February CPU contract spread. Okay, you must long one on short one. So you can short January, but in this case, let's say we long uh, January. And when we say H means you're doing opposite direction. So which is in this case, selling a February uh, FCPO. So uh, instead of calling it January, February, sometimes we just call Gen Feb spread. And then temporary, this can dodge turbulent market volatility. That means sometimes when the market is actually quite volatile, you can turn a uh, contract to spreads so that your, your volatility of the instruments are uh, actually reduced quite a bit. Or you can trade with pure spread strategy. That means you just without knowing the, the actual individual contract month selection, you can actually trade the spread uh, strategy, strategy as well. Now, with this, how this uh, spread works, I will actually, I actually ex extracted uh, some data from individual contracts, okay? Uh, this is actually happens on the 2nd of October, a uh, few months back, 2018. Okay, okay. the first column is actually the contract one, which is October, November, December. You see every individual contract or expiration date, uh, there's one contract. And each contract has got different, different prices. That means, it doesn't mean that palm oil, uh, let's say in this case, it's crude palm oil. For October contract expiration contract in let's say today, 2nd of October, um, it's 2,086 ringgit, okay, for October. But November not necessarily is same as 2,086 as well. It can be different prices. In this case, November is 2011, uh, 2,116. And December is actually 2,160. So different contract or expiration, it has got different different prices. In this case, you can see that the far months, the further months down the road, the price is actually higher. The nearer month, which is October, November, and December, when these prices are, are traded on 2nd of October, the near months are actually lower. So these are these these are some, you know, from fundamental point of view, uh, there's a reason for them to be traded lower than the far month because of 
cost of carry, uh, their interest, you know, their actually storage costs and all this, which total up, you know, and also their export uh, issue production and all this. So traders think that, you know, in the future month, CPU price can be traded higher. And then the next day, the prices also change, changes, and they're still not exactly the same price just yet, okay? So it, it, it looks actually quite funny, you know, different, different months trade in different, different prices and, and how to find a, a core relationship of this. But actually you can find it. Once you plot in a chart or you plot in Excel, you find there's a pattern or chart, okay? For example, I plotted 2nd of October in a graph. Okay, all the individual prices I plot in a chart. You can see that the prices at the near lower and then the further is actually higher. This is actually a perfect uh, 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 price curve. Usually commodity has got this kind of curve. That means the further months always uh, more expensive. The reason is uh, you also take into account inflation. You also, you also taking account of uh, let's say inflation. So that means uh, a ringgit now actually doesn't mean that you know also value at the same as one ringgit. Usually things uh, become more and more expensive in the future, sir. Right. So assuming in this case, let's say uh, I, I want to simulate a trading in uh, CS, which is calendar spread. Let's say if you buy November contract or on the second of October, and I buy the price at two thousand one hundred sixteen uh, uh, ringgit, the price, okay. At the same time, because to form a spread, I need to sell somewhere. And I feel like, okay, the near month's price are low, so I buy. And then the far month's prices are actually high. So I choose a month, let's say in this case, March of 2019, I sell at 2,361 uh, ringgit. Eh? So what you will do is actually the next day, the contract I long of November, it went up 36 uh, point or uh, ringgit, okay? The point that I saw is actually also went up 10 uh, ringgit. So obviously this contract, I lose 10 ringgit, but because of the first contract, I make 36 ringgit. Eh? Net, net, actually I make 26 ringgit. So that means my spread actually a long spread. When you buy a near and sell far, usually uh, in a forward spread, we call a long spread eh, or buy spread. So I actually make 26 ringgit. And this 26 ring is actually translate into my profit. Okay, so this is uh, how spreads works. If you have question, you can you can put in the uh, question chat box, which I will answer you in a little bit. Of course, you may ask um, if I just buy 2,116 uh, uh, contract without selling the 2361, I could have made 36 ring it rather than 26 ring it. Uh, but in this case, why I will do a spread or rather do a spread uh, than doing, you know, uh, an outright uh, contract. The reason is because if I'm doing outright, all right, um, I may actually get the profit of the decision. But I could be wrong also, let's say if the market actually went down, all right, if it's went down, actually, I might be actually losing 36. Or let's say I do a short rather than buy of uh, 2,116. Eh? So I could be actually shorting. So if I shot, I, I could have made the 36 ringgit losses, you know. But if I do a spread, if I'm wrong, actually I lost the 26. So the risk is actually slightly lower. Second is actually, because I wouldn't have known the market surely will go up tomorrow. And do you know that sometime if I long the near man, I shorted the far man, the price can actually come down. All right, but because the farm month come down faster, my long direction is still correct. I can still make money, even the market go against me uh, primarily. So this is the beauty of trading uh, spread. Let's move on to the advantages. Uh, in this case, I have listed down some advantages for you. Okay, and the advantages is actually reducing risk. Okay, how we say reduce risk, but you know, uh, the simplest way to to know that um, reducing risk is actually related to the related to the second point, where uh, the margin is actually lower for spread trading. When the margin is lower, means um, the even the the exchange recognize the risk of trading spread is actually lower. That's why the margin 
uh, can be lowered to a point that um, you know could be five times lower than an outright directional. So I'll show this all in slides. Uh, and also the advantages of trading uh, BMD um, CPOs candle spread is that you increase your leverage and you know and it's also a liquidity provision and then um, the risks are all spread to the months so let's let's look at you know one by one uh, of all this okay first is there are so many months are traded all right uh, the active spread can be you know a lot but you know for just our contracts it can be like 30 over counters uh, oh, sorry, uh, contracts for your trade. And then if you combine, let's say you, you can combine January and February, January and March, January and May. So you have so many combinations. Uh, so there are more than 30 or even 40 contracts are active at one time, which you can trade uh, these spreads. That means maybe only one con product, FCPO, but you you can look at different, different months and combinations. Uh, you actually can create like up to 10, 20, 30, 40 uh, active spread for yourself. Now, one advantage of trading um, spread is that the hour prices are moving somehow fast for manual trading. Uh, for most of people, for me, like, for example, if the, the price can move, let's say 50 points in just a short while, right? So I'll, I'll actually think that in this case, uh, in 30 minutes, it dropped 50 points. Uh, it's actually not easy. You, you can say it's easy you know to make like 50 points in half an hour but um since i'm trading full time i always look at things like differently i'll, I'll look at how how much is on my risk in this case if i do a long and my position was wrong i could have quickly lost 50 points or ring it in half an hour it's actually a huge loss if you have holding a a lot of position so to me this is actually quite risky so somehow the speed is not necessary my friend uh, and volatility sometimes is actually not necessary it's actually towards favor of mine so that's why r is actually too fast for main trading so how to reduce um the speed of an outright directions you apply break what is a break the break is actually you app by pulling um in the opposite directions okay so for example if you buy a, a contract then you subsequently you also sold a contract in the opposite directions. Uh, that means if actually pull down the speed of the difference, the price that you are actually locking to uh, move so much slower. So this is actually quite important here. Um, the market becomes slower to you, all right? Relatively slower. People are trading still trading at a high speed, but because you're trading spreads, your speed becomes slower actually. And uh, directional and trend is actually too hard to predict. So this is um, how this is actually uh, doing it. Um, you see, when you're trading, primarily everyone is actually trading on a direction, okay? When you're trading a directions, um, you need to be correct, okay? In order to prosper or make money. But sometimes directional or trend is actually too hard to predict. So usually, Roughly, you know the market will go up, but the market doesn't go up because you think you go up and you go in the same day, the price will go up. No, usually market won't react this way. If you trade long enough, you you, you realize that often or not, um, you think the market is going up because of production is actually coming down, let's say, for example, and you do a long FCPO. The price will go up probably a bit and then come back, come down probably against you 10, 20, or even 30 ticks if before actually it will go up again. But if you're actually losing 30 ticks and you cut losses, uh, you cut this position, the position actually come back to you, but you have actually gone out and with losses. Uh, so it's actually, even your, your, your prediction is actually correct, but not necessarily you could have made money. So spread trading could have actually take this directional and train almost away from you so that you, you don't have to be guessed right all the time to be able to make money. So this is actually one of the uh, reason uh, I'm actually trading spread. And also position trading is, is tricky because, you know, when you trade position, of course, you can say, oh, seasonal, uh, I, I could do a lot of short here and there. Uh, you could have big money. Um, yes, a lot of people that I know actually trade 
position, you know, with fundamental wheel uh, play. Uh, they were long because of seasonal. These price are actually supported well. Let's say below 2000, you can actually long. So eventually, it come back to probably 2005 as average price. Every, if everybody know where is the mean or average prices of uh, in instrument, you can always buy when the price is actually below the mean or the practical value of or fair value. So if fair value of FCPU is actually 2005 uh, for whole year, for this year, for example, anything below 2005, you can long. And anything be above 2005, you can short, right? But of course, position trading is actually so hard so that you could need to hold the position long enough uh, before you make money. So sometimes you you run into losing uh, money uh, when you actually could have made money if you hold it a little bit longer. So this is the, the, the tricky part of uh, holding uh, position trading. Another thing is actually margin. Okay, on margin side, uh, CPU outright is 4,005, which will be increased to 5,000 from today. Okay, but the CPU spread is actually 1,002. Uh, it used to be even lower risk, like 600 and 800. So why this margin is actually lower uh, for FKI outright and also for um, uh, CPU outright? Because um, the action itself uh, recognized spread trading is actually an instrument has got lower volatility or the range is actually moved slightly lesser. Let's say, for example, CPU can move 100 ticks or 100 points or bring it in probably two, three days or even one day. But CPU uh, spread could have, you know, moved like five points, seven points, 10 points in a day. It rarely like go 100 ticks in a day. So that's why when when the risk or the volatility of this instrument is actually lower, so the margin required to hold a position overnight is also lower. So that means the margin lower first. The benefit is everybody can trade this because the margin required is lower. Second is it actually um, shown you that the, the, the risk of trading this spread is actually lower as well. Now, another benefit of trading spread is you take the gaps away from it. I, I don't know about you. Is when I'm trading outright, I always have this problem. The market always go against me. That means if I do a long, the market will um, uh, gap down tomorrow. Let's say, for example, I long today. Tomorrow, the market will gap down against me 50 points. Or if I shorted, you know, the market could have actually opposite also. You, you see, this is three days market. From here, on, from left hand side, the market gap up okay and go higher but the next day again the market gap down it doesn't follow through it doesn't follow the the trend of the previous day it gap down and go down uh, lower so this gap has been uh, a problematic for me for example because uh, uh, whenever the market go against you in, in market open you have to cut loss you know because it's, it's the gap is 50 points you know it's actually more than the h you, you can you can you can take all the risk you can take now but on the same day at, at the same day cpo spread uh, or fcpo spread okay for this case uh, actually get down 50 for cpo but what happens to the spread the spread has got no gap at all at the same day all right so that means um at the same same day okay gap down in cpo but there's no gap down or gap up okay in spread that is the beauty of trading spread there's no gap in fact um the spread tends to sideways uh, most of the time so what we are doing is actually the objective of trading spread is to benefit from uh the price differences of two contracts that means you, you don't care which contract go up and which contract go down as long as the difference of what you're trading you could have big money. That means, let's say you long a different of eight and then you sell a different 18, you make 10 points. So all the time or most of the time, the overall price level up and down is, is actually not your concern. That means uh, you could have asked me, why is CPU close today? I could have, no, cannot answer you, but I could have answered you, what is the level of the spread, you know? So because 
people when trading spreads, they tend to forget about you know the overall uh the, the trend, yeah, we roughly we know, but we wouldn't like really care is today going up more or going down more. But what we care about is the differences of the contracts that we are trading. Is a price fail to me. That means if the leg that I'm making money can be more than the leg that I'm losing money, or sometimes good is that both legs also you can have, could have made money, you know. So this is what uh, more important uh, to a spread trader. And spread trading is actually a, a trading strategy because you're trading two outrights. Eh? It makes it into a spread strategy. And there are many other uh, strategies as well, like butterfly and iron condor. So these are the uh, strategy available for you to trade in uh, spread. Okay. So why you want or why you need to trade um, strategy? Because uh, when you're trading a strategy, you have a better chance to survive in a turbulent market. So what it means is, um, let's say, let's say, for example, if you have been trading long enough, you know that let's say over a, a period of time, the market is actually quiet. You know, maybe doing a scalping. Scalping is actually you make one, two points, one, two points, you know, from the market. But suddenly the market, boom, become very volatile. And if you've been focused on scalping in sideways markets, uh, suddenly you find yourself in a very bad position because you saw the market go against you 50 points or even 100 points away in just very short time. But if you're trading spread, Probably a, a, a big range day will be 10 points or, you know, uh, or so. So it won't be so hard uh, if, if let's say, if you're careful, all right, it won't against you in 100 points. It could have against you in four or five points only. And because you're trading both directions, so when you're trading both directions, that means your direction become less sensitive uh, to, I mean, your trading become less sensitive to the action. The market can go up or it, the market can, can go down, but any market up and down, actually they could have uh, a short period of time which the market will favor you. And once the market favor you, there's a time that you can actually take the profit and cash out, you know, close the position. Now, the third one probably most important is managing a losing position. Um, what I do is actually most of the time I, I wouldn't say I cut losses. Okay. Although there are, there are so many trading require you to cut losses, but in, in, in spread trading, uh, I think we, we have less prone to use, uh, cutting a losing position. That means, uh, I will, I will say if I'm actually losing money in one of my position, what I will do is actually to manage the losing position. Okay, so you should, I, I'll say hedging. Who would like to say, let's say if you've been trading uh, 10 times a day and out oh, 10 times all the position against you and you have to cut loss 10 times, will you be in a positive emotion if you have cut loss 10 times in a day? But if I actually have been trading and holding a losing position in my 10 trades, last 10 trades, uh, but because each of the trades I'm actually managing by doing a hedging, or, or managing a losing position, I call this position, I go in, but you know, it goes against me, yes, but I hedge the position. So which one you prefer? You prefer to cut loss 10 times in a day or you prefer to hedge 10 times in a day? Um, believe me, in long run, you would rather stick to hedging rather than cut losses because the more you cut losses, uh, your confidence levels, everything drops, all right? So this kind of managing a losing position eliminates cut loss approach, okay? So it, it, it doesn't mean that cut loss is actually not good, but um, if you have a method that can reduce uh, the requirement to cut losses, uh, it could be a good way, which is what we are doing now. And extendable to other products and cross-border, as you say, you know, eventually when you're trading CPO, you can also trade soya bean. And this kind of trading, uh, uh, technique, it become very, very complex, uh, uh, which we call a strand strategy, but don't, don't get me wrong. The complexity doesn't mean that it's very hard. Uh, in fact, I would say trading, the way we are trading is actually quite simple, but trading to be successful and, and making money consistently is actually quite difficult, uh, because of the trader itself. 
uh, why I say it's actually cross border and also extend to other products. For example, in, in, in the state, probably people are trading soya bean, soya oil, and soy meal. There's three related products and they listed it. In Malaysia, we have uh, palm oil. Uh, we, we also have crude palm oil. So these are all, you know, you can mix together and, and tr trade, you know. And, and usually these are adopted by professionals, institutions, and also on and so forth. Lah. So trading with strategy is actually important. And um, BMD is actually quite uh, nice. We have actually a code score, butterfly codes uh, available for our local market. Uh, it was introduced since January of 2017. Okay. And continue with the advantages of spreads. Uh, the loss of a contract can be offset by a gain on the other side. So the spread trading has a lower risk than outright trading because when you gain, you lose, you know. Uh, but because it's always offsetting each other, so somehow the risk is actually lower because of the speed, because of the volatility. Now, and also that you can see that the lower margin means retailers or basic traders, you know, and alike are also suitable to trade, uh, to trade, in fact, trade like a professional. And when you talk about small range, low volatility, it doesn't mean that it doesn't move. Okay, I have some charts here can show that actually spread can move like, for example, from five to 40, Okay, the spread price becomes the difference of one contract to an, another. So in this case, it's from difference, the, the two contract differences are is actually from five can widen to 40 and then string back to five. So this is actually how you trade the spread. If you take a, a middle line, you know, probably it's 20. Yeah? So you can actually trade uh, between these uh, uh, medium prices, right? And there's another chart shows you the volatility of uh, spreads, which, you know, it can come from positive four to positive 33. And, and now the spread is actually trading at negative uh, uh, region because the near months is actually higher. Back then, uh, a few years ago, due to El Nino and all this, uh, the spread is actually trading at, you know, a positive uh, direction. So with that, the disadvantages, uh, I need to actually probably share with you as well. Uh, because something good, of course, you always associate with something um, not so good, okay? So limiting risk at the same time, also limiting your reward. Meaning to say, um, if if you try to limit the risk, because you're taking lesser risk, and risk always associate with reward or reward to risk, all right? Now, if you're limiting the risk, at the same time, you're actually limiting your reward. That means... Uh, if somebody can make, let's say, 100 points in a day, you know how much, you know, a uh, uh, spread trade can make? It could be only five points, you know. The maximum range, uh, there is one day range for CPO outright can be 100 ticks, uh, for example, a very big one. Uh, but back then, the, 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 the range of spread can probably move five ticks on, only. There means a friend sit beside you, trading outright, make 100 points, and you said yourself is actually full time and your trading spread and you make five points is actually quite laughable, right? But uh, I, 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 my point is actually, although it's actually limiting the reward, but you have to choose whether you want to limit the risk or you want to re limit your reward, right? Higher commission, because you're trading both sides, your, your, your trading asset, you go, don't go in one direction, you go in both directions. You have to pay double the commission. So you need to actually have a good broker that recognizes spread trading and they give you a very good rate. But usually this come in always handy. Like if you trade more, your broker will be more to more than willing to give you a better rate, all right? So don't be so uh, 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 hindered by the higher commission. So usually they will actually offer you quite a good rate. And lacks of information because yeah, like, like Shane said, you know, it's past kept secret. So if you find, want to find out more information about spread, actually, you can actually log into my website, which uh, Shane has just shared you know, earlier, which is www.straightsyntax.com. So over there, there will be more information and more Q and A's, you know, you can actually request the link, which we'll send to you uh, the previous recorded video when we discuss more about that. 
And then um, spread trading can be confusing orders and price movement right, at the beginning, right? Big, and, and it lack of stop loss strategy and plans uh, because we always doing hedging. So it become probably different than what you are doing now. And of course, when the position build up uh, is too big, you know, you, you still, you know, your risk is actually still increased in a way. Let's say you're trading one lot of outrights, but spread you're trading 10 lots, 20 lots, 30 lots, uh, your risk is actually almost as big as them. Lah. So this is actually you have to uh, aware of. Now, second, um, after this is actually spread going up and down is actually quite um, confusing for some, especially when you're just starting out. Um, it can go up and down, even though every time if the news or data like this, the price of, of the spread go up. But next time the price, same situation, the spread of the price of the spread can actually go the opposite direction. So you have to be aware roughly how to you, you, you still need to gauge the direction, but you don't really need to be very accurate. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, uh, these, these two pictures or, or charts shows you that the spread sometimes can inverse of our right. Let's say, for example, on the right-hand side, this is the direction of the, 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 the CPU prices. The price go up all the way from the left to the right. But take a look at the spread. On the left-hand side is, is spread, and this spread, is actually coming down all the way. That means your outright or the direction of the instrument can go up all the way, but the spread can actually do the opposite direction and come down all the way. So this is interesting. Uh, that's, that's why, as I said, you, you can be correct or you can be wrong, but the market could have actually um, uh, still make money from the, the same trade, but you actually could have actually guessed wrong uh, if you're trading outrights in, in, in a normal situation. So this is uh, uh, spreads. And one of the dilemma, of course, is, as I said, the, the advantages is actually you have so many uh, uh, contracts to trade, but if you are not aware how to control this, it, it could be too many contracts, you don't know which to start. But of course, the easiest way is always start with the one with the highest open, in, uh, open interest, which you, you don't see in, in spread, but you can see in the outright prices or the one that most traded, usually the third month and fourth month onwards, uh, those are the contracts that traded most. So these are the contracts you, you can fo focus and start with one contract first. Eventually, you can trade more and more contracts. So it, it, actually, spread trading just like driving a car, right? Um, you could have not remember how you have actually drive home today or drive to work today. You, you know that you're driving and, and safely arrive into your destination, but you forgot whether you, you use the left hand or right hand more, or which, which, how many times you actually turn, you know, you, you don't remember that, but you remember how to drive. So trading spread is actually just exactly like learn how to drive a car. That, that's my opinion, huh? right? And spread trading is actually because it's hedging and spread position can be hedged again and again and again. So. There's some aspect need to be understand to start trading these spreads. It's just, just basic concept. There's a, there's some books available, uh, but of course usually usually the books are actually talk about spread in options, and um, basic things like which contract to trade and and so on. Uh, which one to avoid? Of course, I can answer you is to avoid the spot month because you're not going to uh, trade the spot month uh, as this is the physical delivery orders. All right, and which trading tools and strategies? Of uh, course, you probably need some price data, uh, chart if you prefer using chart as rather than prices. But usually most of the spread trader, we are actually reading prices rather than charting. So charting probably not the most important tools, but the prices is actually uh, important to us. And uh, what trading tools probably, uh, the, the most important trading tools that we are using is actually Excel, okay? So you just record and, and do some analysis and data, so you're recording all the data announced by MPOB. So these are the things that you need to do. And last but not least, I'll, I'll, I'll slightly discuss with you uh, before probably we go to Q&A session is, is, is we, we ask the question uh, rather than try to answer you why, is why not trading spreads? Uh, traders don't trade spreads because the thing is actually difficult in trading uh, it. Huh? As I said, this is just like drawing car. Once you know, then you are you are you don't find it difficult. First thing first. Second, it, there's 
to try to find something that easier. That means you buy at low, then you sell high. Ah, it's easier. So they try to trade this way. But trading spread can be so many different different ways. You know, you can do arbitraging. You can do uh, seasonal patterns, seasonality. You can trade with you know fundamental view. Uh, in your mind to trade spreads. You know, you can trade a hedging, uh, butterflies, and condor. So these are the 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 few strategy that. You just need to master probably one or two, then you, you know how to trade spread. And and probably why allow one leg to lose is actually a lot of uh question asked to me. Uh if you know the direction. So my answer is actually um almost no traders can directly answer you tomorrow if you go up or down. Let's say even you know roughly uh the trend is the price can go from currently, you know. 2001, 2002, uh, the farm months actually doing 2003. It could actually just reach the prediction of 2005 uh, for this year. It could go even higher in the coming two, three months time. Uh, last year is almost like, you know, uh, earlier, uh, earlier of the year we're doing like 3,000 levels, you know. This could be still correct. But when you're long now, the market can, the CPU price can go down 100 ticks before it come back, you know. So that is the difficult part because you will never guess the direction correctly uh, all the time because you need to trade long term, right? And brokerage is high. Uh, it's only favor to the broker, but uh, this is actually I heard before, but which is not true. Like, the broker is actually the one that if you're trading long enough, uh, it's a business relationship with you that will help you. Uh, even the exchange, actually, Busan Malaysia has got so many programs. Uh, you can actually check out with them. The, their contacts is actually easily available uh, in their website. Uh, you can contact them and they will actually let you know what kind of programs or you can even contact your brokers, what type of incentive programs that you can you can enjoy if you're actually really trading into you know uh, full-time uh, point of uh, uh, point of view, and maybe number four is the market moves too so slow. Okay, it's because um, yes, sometimes the market actually quite quiet. You know, trading as full time, sometimes the job can be a quite a tiring and boring. You know, sometimes the market maybe don't move uh, the whole day. It may it could have moved thirty minutes in the morning and thirty minutes in the afternoon. So, or even it moves is not fast. So it could be not so excited because uh, I have actually also told that it's more excited to, to trade the outright direction. That means you can gamble in one direction, you make 100 points. But I wouldn't agree on that. To me, trading is actually more like uh, a job kind of thing. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave excitement to, you know, at night you can actually go home and, and watch, a, watch a movie or TV stay, uh, program, something like that. Uh, rather than actually trading for excitement. Uh, over the years, my trading is actually quite boring. So I, because it's a job, just, just like you're doing your job, you know, it's, it's actually kind, kind of boring, right? So I treat trading just like my job, you know, you know, uh, uh, well, first it's different time zone. Uh. I mean, we were trading, let's say CPU is actually from 10.30 to 6. And so I would never actually trade for excitement, but I trade for as a job. Right, and most of the books and stories I read uh, was all about directional. You know, most of the legendary traders are very good in trading outright directional, which is true when you're actually trading bigger and bigger positions. Not only spread you can trade with more and more equity, you can trade outrights, you can trade any other combination as long as you have uh, enough or ample profits which grow your capital. So if your capital is still small, spread trading are still the best and is your friend. So there are more actually uh, uh, of trading spreads. But with this, actually, I, I stop first because uh, usually I'll get quite a bit of uh, question in the Q&A. Uh, I try to answer as much as possible. These theories and, and the inspiration part is actually just a steps for you to, to come with questions. Uh, you can ask me. The more you ask me, but of course, the more that I can tell you. Lah. Uh, so with this, probably I'll, 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 I'll pass back to our host, uh, Shen, in live Shen. Hello. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, CC, for your wonderful sharing about spread trading. 
And uh, I guess for those of you who are uh, interested in this strategy, CC is uh, no, I guess in the market, no other people better than CC Yong can deliver this topic already. Okay, so now if you have any <laughs> questions, please uh, put down, write down in the Q&A uh, question box so we can uh, get the speaker to un address your concern. Now, please remember, write the sentence in, uh, write your question in full sentences so that we can understand what you mean. Okay? Because if I don't understand what you mean, then I will probably not ask this question, okay? First question, how do you buy and sell spread simultaneously or it can be 15 minutes or 30 minutes apart this is from Shofa. okay um okay um uh, probably what you mean is actually how you execute the spread okay uh the spread can actually go in in number of ways okay your question is can i buy let's say for example the question that i just shown sir uh, uh sorry the example i just shown let's say for some this one can I just buy the 2116 and then 15 min min late, minutes later, I sell the 2361, right? Uh, it can be done this way, but uh, most of the time or all the trades that I'm actually doing is actually I'm, I'm doing it simultaneously. I want to lock in the spread price I wanted as as it is. Uh, but there are, there are a number of traders that prefer to get the price slightly better. So let's say if I want to buy, say in this case, 26, uh, I would just buy 26, but there are some traders probably they will wait, uh, as, as you said, you know, 15 minutes or five minutes later, uh, or depends on the situation, they may actually get 24 or 23, you know, a few ticks better, which is, uh, some are doing it. Uh, if you ask me trading a spread, okay. I go in the spread simultaneously, two legs, that means one long, one short simultaneously. Uh, but you also say that uh, how to buy a spread and then later 15 minutes later sell a spread. Are that copy? You need to turn to a butterfly and, and all this. Lah. But uh, to answer your question in short, I go in simultaneously for me. Uh, there's a number of traders, they may actually go in one direction. If they're correct, they wouldn't short. That means in this case, they may actually bought the 2116. Then suddenly the price actually go 10 points, 20 points uh, favor to them. They will never sell the 2361. They will actually just take profit on the 2116. But this, you, if you're doing it, it provided you have an idea how to hedge them. Is when you're wrong, you sell 2361. So this is this is what uh, they could have prepared of doing it. So they could go in one leg first and we call leg in, leg out way. Uh, this is actually one way, but the, the risk of uh, losing in this uh, or not feeling or hung orders are uh, uh, actually slightly higher. And you could have actually write a software or you can get some softwares that they actually allow you to do, to do this kind of spread, right? And, and uh, you, you, you want them to actually upcharge prices for you. So uh, choices are you, but if your question asking me, do I go in simultaneously? Yes, I do go in simultaneously, but you don't have to worry about which leg to go in first and, and out. Because uh, Busan Malaysia, BMD, they have a code in spreads. You just buy the spread, they will deliver to you simultaneously. You have both legs. Okay, thank you so much, uh, CC. Now we have the next question on my screen. If the ratio for FKLI slash FM70, that means you compare FKLI and FM70, is three mm -hmm. to seven. How is the hmm. margin being calculated? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Busa has got a very intelligent system which to calculate your margin. That means if you go in three lots of FKI, uh, long less, for example, then you sell seven lots of FM70, they will pair three FKI to three FM70. Okay. Then balance of four pairs, uh, four uh, outright legs of FM70 uh, is considered outright. That means, let's say if 800 of... Uh, then you have to multiply by, uh, let's say 800 times four, that's 3,200 plus the 1,920 times three pairs, right? Then plus 3,200. So total your margin become 8,960. So there will actually, um, I don't know how it's calculated, lah, huh? the system will calculate and show you this margin that you need to pay. So they're they quite uh, uh, automatic. Um, 
because your broker is actually also rely uh, any broker lah, uh, rely on Busa settlement prices and margin requirement uh, at the end of the day. So that is the margin required. But during intraday trading, there is another uh, source of margin. Usually we call either day trade or intraday margin. Uh, that is actually a uh, usually set by your broker. So your broker may actually require you to pay the full margin for all the legs. Uh, but at the end of the day, the margin required is actually uh, calculated the, the way I told you. That means three FKI pay with three FM70, your margin become uh, 1,920 times three, but it will be increased a bit tomorrow. Huh? Plus four lots of uh, uh, spread margin, uh, sorry, four lots of RA margin for FM70. So it's still not a full margin. So it's quite safe, quite a lot because FM70 has got lower margin, 800 per lot only, right? Okay, all right. So next question is, uh, usually spread trading like prefer hold the position for how long do you day trade or you do weekly trade or you do monthly trade all right um okay what i do is actually um i i, I do intraday scalping let's say today i could have let's say sell uh 31 and then i buy 32 uh minus 31 and minus 30, 33 like i said for example i make two points so these are can be done in one day or even sometimes one hour or less than one hour. So this is actually intraday trading. But when I'm actually holding a position, let's say, for example, I have long some March April, let's say, for example, uh, I'm waiting it to probably make four points, five points. Uh, I also probably sold some April, May, you know, um, hoping that throughout this kind of hedging, I could have made some money. Uh, this kind of trade, I could have hold for one week. Okay, so I have, intraday trading every day i also have a uh, position holding or we call a uh, uh, string trading probably uh, which i hold for probably sometimes from two weeks uh, one week to two weeks uh, and then sometimes up to probably three to four weeks so usually if the profit is actually hit and i take profit uh, i won't i won't be hesitated i will take profit but sometimes um sometimes if the profit, uh, let's say, or the position is actually not making money, I hold it longer. Uh, so my position trading will be from probably one to two weeks to three, four weeks. Uh, but I wouldn't like hold few months. Uh, that's usually not my style. So usually my style will be intraday trading and holding a few weeks uh, spread positions. Okay, thank you so much. And um, next question is, what is the best TF you use for trading spread? Uh, TF is target profit, right? Okay. Um, I think so. Best, um, Actually, so. usually <laughs> you say TP, right? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. TF? Is it TP or TF? <laughs> TF or it was written TF. All right. Uh, let's say I assume. Let's or assume or time, TP frame, TF, time frame. Oh, maybe it's time, time frame, frame. Yeah. So time that's frame, why okay. I... That's why I share with you, don't write in short form because we do not how, know how to interpret that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's time frame, yes. It's very true yeah. because, because yeah. I, 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 sometimes I, I don't use a lot of short, short, shorthand, yeah. so yeah. I wouldn't know what is it means. Yes, he uh, time frame. Uh, okay, if time frame, uh, okay, time frame as in usually referring to charting, okay? Uh, but as I said, most spread traders, we look at prices, that means, uh, I look at where is the opening price and every seconds or every single trades, where is the price moving up and down, you know? I look at the price itself. Uh, but when you talk about 10 frame, we'll be looking at chart, uh, which I don't normally do uh, a lot. Um, but for intraday trading, I look at five minutes chart. I only, I, I, I won't change time frame. Uh, but in a day, let's say if I go home, I need to do a study. Let's say what happens today on this contract. There's so many contracts, right? So I'll use a daily chart, uh, which is enough for me. Uh, and that's all. And often or not, I, I write my own chart sometimes because I just need some charts that are different from the chart provider. So what I do is just, I, I use the price to plot the closing prices, you know? So to me, uh, some of my charts are just one line. There's no bar chart, no candlestick. 
uh, but for intraday, uh, I'll use five minutes, that's all. But as I said, most of the time, I refer to prices rather than chart. Uh, for go home, you know, kind of like overnight study, I will use um, daily chart. Okay, so the next question is, what is this butterfly strategy? Okay, uh, butterfly strategy is actually uh, you trading few contracts, especially uh, there, there's a strategy which you, you go in long uh, one leg, you short two, and then you long one, or you short two, uh, sorry, you short one, then you long two. That means the contract in the middle is always fat or bigger, like a body of butterfly. Um, so this is actually uh, defined uh, in here, okay? Usually it's considered as four legs trading, okay? You have long two legs, you also short two legs, okay? So you have total of four legs when trading uh, butterfly. So butterfly essentially is actually combination of two spreads, op opposing spreads. So actually, when you go in spread, that means you're going two legs. When you go in butterfly, you're going four legs. All right. Uh, but how to trade butterfly? You become a different uh, thing, uh, which usually uh, you can start with trading spread first. Again, eventually you can combine your spread become a butterfly strategy. Uh, but as I said, <laughs> Malaysia Bursa Malaysia has got very good codes, which now you don't have to do all this one leg, two legs, four legs. You know. You can actually go in butterfly codes and you trade the butterfly directly in the butterfly codes. The, the one that's showing in your screen is actually a butterfly codes, which you can buy, let's say 10, you sell 14, you make four points. Uh. So this is a butterfly codes. And, and, and if you're trading futures, it's already in your screen. You can actually call this out. Uh, probably contact your broker. Your broker should have able to help you to call out this uh, instrument and help you do it. All right, thank you for your wonderful explanation of butterfly strategy. Now, uh, the next question on my screen is, uh, is it better to enter a position in spread during contract expiring time to get a better position? Um, not really, because it uh, depends on the instrument you're doing. Uh, for example, if you're trading uh, FKLI, you're trading uh, FGLD, these products uh, or FM70, these products are cat sector. So look at the, the contract specification. Whenever they said cat sector, so if let's say if you train spot month, uh, uh, for example, F, FKI actually you have to trade spot month because those are these are the most active contracts you can trade. Uh, most of the time you we, we, we go into spot month. So uh, towards expiration, probably you mean by let's say FKI when they expire, they're more active. A lot of traders are low, rolling over, so they are willing to give you good prices. Yes, uh, but then when you're referring to other contract like CPO or FCPO, they are um, physical delivery contracts, which mean when you go to spot months, uh, you will have chance to be tendered. Well, once you're tendered, you have to take the delivery or you deliver your order, uh, I mean CPO. So which uh, is not, not recommended for uh, traders to really like trading into a spot month contract, which is not mean no, but be careful when before the market is delivered. So once the market delivered, then you have to find a way to, to sort of like <clears throat> retender your contract and all this. Lah. So for FCPO, um, there are some traders trading second month, third month. Okay. Uh, honestly, with you, I'm, I'm actually trading second month as well. Sometimes I do go into a spot month. Um, um, there's there's different way of trading, but I would recommend a uh, beginner trader when you start first trading spread in CPO, okay, trade the third month onwards first, and eventually you can either move further down or you actually closer to the spot month. But if you're trading FN70, FGLD, and also uh, FKLI, these are cash sector, no worries, you don't have to deliver stocks or buy stock from them. Uh, there will be cash sector. So, if let's say your order or your position one leg into spot month and expired, the other leg will consider as an outright position. So you can trade like normal and you can actually do opposite trade on the following months and turn back to a spread. So it's, it's, it's always a, a good strategy. 
And do you know that, let's say, if you're holding 10 lots uh, FKI, for example, the market about to close and you cannot get out because the price is not there for you. You can quickly, let's say you long, let's say like generally five lots, but your margin is actually probably not enough to cover. You probably can sell uh, February, five lots also. You long generally, you sell five uh, February. You turn your position to a spread, you know, and your margin required will be lower. So this can be done. But of course, I'm not recommending doing this as in this could have been uh you have out you know almost margin call but then you use this to actually let yourself to to get out of margin call uh uh it's, it's not that uh good you know because once you've been margin call probably that means your risk management is thrown out of window you shouldn't do that but this can be done as i said this is this is not a loophole this is just a strategy so uh, as a trader, we, we, we don't trade anything or we, we don't trade or do something that illegal. We, we trade within our boundary and and you, you are allowed to turn your outright right position to a spread and enjoy a spread overnight. Uh, but first, a broker also will have different different restrictions for different uh, type of trading style. Lah. So these are all just certain ways of trading uh you know futures contract so the spot man thing is something that you can think of you can always ask people around you whether should i trade into spot man uh, but this is also another way so once this let's say for example fki expire in your know, january so tomorrow you have to manage your february as five lots so effectively you transfer your five lots from january to to you know uh february as well over to you. Yes. Um, the next question is, do you trade through the entire trading hour, like the morning sessions, then uh, afternoon session, or you will avoid 30 minutes before the market close? Like most those trading out, right? Okay. Uh, very good question. Uh, as a spread traders, I do not have limitation uh of when should i or sh shouldn't i trade basically i trade through uh the entire hour uh but the market is not active all the time so probably sometimes i'm, I'm not just not actively trading but honestly speaking because hours you can look at only one contract but in spread trading there's like 10 to 20 or even nearly 30 contracts to monitor if you really uh hard working so the, 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 it's always opportunity. I, and I don't mind the market be volatile, I mean, moving uh, from 10.30 to 6 p.m. At, in the afternoon. I, I don't mind. Uh, actually, the more, the better. Lah. But of course, the market won't be so active all the time. And not only entire uh, 10.30 to 6, I also like trade almost every day in, in the whole year. So, um, one one of the key to be you know understanding the market is actually uh hard working you know you, you trade almost like every day so that you know the market inside out you know after sometimes when i start trading start, started trading i always uh wonder do i understand what is export what is you know mpob data what are the things that i wanted to but if you're trading like every day you mix with people in this line every day after some time uh, or maybe a year or two you you yourself become uh really uh you, you actually get to know inside out about this product and, and trading hours which is best which is not good for you uh yeah I, I i traded entire hour and i never avoided certain time but of course the first let's say the first 30 minutes sometimes with that there's a pattern let's say for example First 30 minutes, when the market trade in one direction, it could swing to another direction on the second, uh, first half an hour. Uh, this could be happen some patterns, but um, I wouldn't mind the market can go in or swing any direction uh, as long as it get my orders feel. Uh, when when the market go against me, then I need to find a way to escape from any heavy, uh, the, uh, uh, heavy losses. Eh? Uh, but usually hedging is my my way of you know protecting myself lah. Okay, so when you say that um the talk about hedging uh, there's a question on hedging. 
So the next question is, uh, you see, when you are wrong, you hedge, right? And mm. when you're in the hedge and still wrong, do you hedge further? And when do you stop your hedging eventually? Like, will it will this hedging end up as like average down strategy? That is the question. All right. Um. Uh. You know. In a way, hedging. Um. It can be done many, many, many times. Uh. Yes. In a way, it will be uh averaging down. But uh, if you're trading spreads, not not necessarily you you, you can only do average averaging down. No doubt, it's actually um, I I do some averaging down. Um, but I can also do it on opposite. That means, let's say if I trade a direction, suddenly my direction wrong, I can actually do a hedge. Eh? My entire position eh, become opposite. Let's say for example. I could be buying, let's say, uh, let's say lah, March and selling April. Okay, suddenly my March, uh, April, okay, become wrong. So what I can do is actually I can sell April, but the April may not help me. So what I'm thinking is, probably I can sell February, but in, not in this case. In this case, February become a uh, 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 spot month. Uh, let's let's assume there's no spot man involved. So I could have been start selling February to help my match, you know. So sometimes you can find you you could find my trading become because I just want to rescue one tiny match April. I'd be build up quite a lot of position to save this position. So this is uh the so called spirit uh, in trading spread because of course cutting loss is easy, but you there's no one no actually. After cut loss, the next trade, do you have to cut loss again? You could, you know. So in a series of 10 times, you're cutting losses because all the 10 times you're going also wrong. But then, do you do you agree that even you cut loss 10 times, uh, you realize that if you hold the original direction, uh, sometimes the direction is actually still correct, but probably not in immediate term, probably in a few more hours or in a day or two or three. Uh, the direction can be correct again. So, but then if you cut loss already, then you turn the direction, then you you be wrong again. You cut and turn, cut and turn. So, as I said, uh, if you want to be full time, it's it's difficult for you to keep on keep on cutting losses every day. So you need to have a strategy that allow you to not necessarily need to cut loss so many times, but in long run you'll be still able to make money. If you ask me, cutting losses so many times is probably not the way uh, you can do in long, long time. But uh, yeah, you can actually hedge uh, to help you to probably uh, go through this difficult time. Okay, so the next question is, what are the tools that we need? Like how many computer screen and do we need software such as a Bursa station or is it or maybe the platform provided by the broker alone is sufficient enough to give us the information that we need? Um, depends on which platform you are using. Uh, usually the broker uh, nowadays, uh, they, they can provide quite a sophisticated uh, platform for you, but they also charge you on that as well. Um, what kind of platform, let's say Busan Station is actually good. Uh, there are a number of other software that provide time and sell. That means you, as long as you can look at time and sell, a bit of chatting, then you actually may be good to go. So my point is actually if you if you can um, have Busa Station, uh, you do your own study, probably you need some uh, chatting. Uh, when you have the chatting tools like Busa Station and all this, uh, uh, or you plot, even plot your own chart, uh, it's actually solved. I mean, sufficient for you to trade spreads. So you don't really need a very sophisticated tools, um, a basic tools like uh, Bursation or any other equivalent uh, real-time data. Uh, and even your broker will probably uh, able to provide you some uh, time and sell data as well. Mm, okay. Now, in reference to your answer just now, uh, there's a follow-up questions on data. So is do you mean that you may hedge many positions to save one bad position? Yes, I actually hedge quite a lot of positions, sometimes just to help one uh, uh, damage or bad position. But for sometimes you can you can look at different ways. Huh? 
because I don't know whether should I cut loss and 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 I just rescue or or stop losing money. So I will never never uh know what will happen next. So usually I'll choose to hedge rather than cut first because when hedging I have time. I buy myself time. Probably I have a few more days to see what will going to happen. Cut loss immediately. There's no no other way. As I said, this is to avoid. Uh, I could have actually ten times losing in a series. You know, so yeah, I will. I will keep on uh, uh, hedging actually. Hmm. Okay. Now, how do you manage risk and reward ratio? Uh, sorry, there were a thunder at our place. Okay, but I. <laughs> If you miss the questions, how to manage the risk and reward ratio, and when do you take profit? Uh, ba- basically in trading spreads, uh, that's not necessary. You 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 need to define a good risk to reward uh, kind of thinky. Uh, in fact, we we don't really look at it. Uh, to me, risk one to reward one is actually good enough, because um. In our our way of trading, probably we want to increase uh, winning ratio, uh, which is probably uh, a bit uh, important to us as well. So there's not so much of risk and reward, but as I said, I can go as low as one to one, or even worse, you know. So, but once you can actually, because it's hedging kind of trading, so you you can have yourself wrong first before you actually start, uh, you know. Could have make money later, yeah. All right. So next question is: Is the price movement on the futures mainly based on technical or fundamental? Mm, all right. Um. I think I think usually the the biggest movers, uh, usually come from fundamental. I think just any instrument. Technical is actually uh sometimes a reference point. Uh, let's say two thousand is is a psychology support. But then if you really trade long enough, you 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 can see that two thousand can break just easily in a blink of second. You know, people will just 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 sell it through, uh, or people just try to buy it up at two thousand, but it, it wouldn't hold for really uh long enough. Uh, in 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 the trading world, um, fundamental is actually the most defector. Uh, issue, but the technical play 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 a a a a point there is sometimes the sometimes we have been I mean the driver is always from the fundamental, but then the technical play along the way. Let's say sometimes after the fundamental play for probably one day or two, there's there's no more other thing to you know as a driver, so the technical come into play, so. The main driver is always fundamental, but technical is, is is something that you can look at the cycle, look at the high and low, which will affect uh, uh, traders' emotions. But the the biggest driver and movers is always from the point of fundamental. Uh, although the support is actually oh last time it supported at this level, so the next time it will support. But if the driver or the fundamental doesn't support this kind of idea. The price won't be supported, and it will just breach and 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 go down. You know, so my point of view is actually fundamental is driver, but fundamental is so hard to interpret uh, directly. You know, so that's why the technical become much easier. But as fundamental getting more and more, um, uh, people are actually using it, so it become, uh. It become easier and easier to to so called predict the market trend. So yeah, it, it's actually play a way. So if you want to prioritize, I would say fundamental first, second is technical. Okay. Uh. So in reference to the earlier question on the hedging, so this is the follow up question. So do you mean that um, so when you're fully hedged and use up all your capital, uh, would you consider cut loss? Uh, good question. Okay. Uh, but in the first place, I will never allow myself to use up all the capital. Uh, I think this is uh quite critical. Uh, I will share this probably uh in the coming uh, risk management 
you have to position yourself to be quite um you have to be quite cool you know calm down not to use up all the margin because yes if i have used up all my margin i have to cut loss actually uh cut loss is my only um consideration uh there's no other option because when you use out the margin and the position is actually going against you further and further they have no more uh right or enough capital to hold the position overnight if you don't liquidate by cutting losses your broker will margin call you t1 t3 depends on your broker uh eventually you have to still cut off so uh i'm never margin called by my broker so uh, but I remember once uh, if something happens, uh, huh? okay, so the order was filled more than I, I actually able to. That was like many years ago. Uh, I have no question asked. Uh, I myself cut the position. So by the end of the day, so I, I wouldn't hold any position or hold more position than my equity allow. Okay, so the next question is can we have an example of spread strategy uh what Maybe. it means by spread mm. yeah. how to go in a spread Maybe will, can will, will that be the Maybe he, he okay let's say ah like... uh, uh, let's say for example if if you ask me a uh, spread strategy is always like let's say for example let's say for example uh -huh, uh, there was a time where the near month spread was minus 70. Minus 70, it means that uh, this month, if you buy the oil, next month, the oil is actually 70 ringgit higher, you sell. So you buy this month, you sell next month at 70 profit, instant profit. You know? So that was a time the spread went to 70 plus and then it doesn't go down anymore and rebound. So this, by definitions, in uh, uh, terms of fundamental, the, the, the spread could not allow you have a very wide difference uh, in the normal days. Even below 30 is actually considered weird. Below 50, yeah, it went 50, then went 70. And the near man can went six, nine, minus uh, negative 90. But before it go to spot man, minus 50, minus 70 is actually not normal. You can do a shot. Or, so this this could be one of your 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 inspiration to to do a long spread, you know, buy the spread, buy near sell far. For example, this is buy near sell far. Usually at the ending of the year, that is what we do. We 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 long near and sell far lah, because by seasonal, okay, you you have to look at seasonal as well. This is the pattern. It it can be traded. There is a pattern that can be traded. So we long near sell far, or. Uh, when you see the near month is actually quite bearish, minus 70 for no reason. Uh -huh. So you can sell the farm. Uh. You can start seeing that, oh, the near month is so bearish. Okay, just now we'll talk about minus 70 is actually weird. You do it long. But now you look at different angle. The near month is so bearish for some reason. People sell minus 70, cut losses. I don't know. You don't care. Okay. So then you sell the farm months. You, you, you think that the farm month will follow suit the 70, the minus 70. So you sell the farm one. So these are from fun and fundamental, a bit of technical, but the technical is actually not about kind of saying all this. Uh, the technical point is actually if the near can pull the farm man down, uh, if yes, then you do a shot. But when this is wrong, then you need to managing your position. But this could be a, a way to go into your first spread position. All right, so we have come to the end of our <laughs> webinar sessions. I want to thank uh, all of you for tuning in. But before we uh, end the sessions, just let me take back my presenter control. Yeah, oh yeah, yes, Dan, you have so nice of you to help me to see the, <laughs> so that I don't have to take back the control. Anyway, this is our next webinar, Introduction to Futures Concept. It will happen on 21st of February. 2019 is a Thursday, so the link has been shared in the uh, the chat box. If you want to sign up for our uh, webinar next month, 
which is after the Chinese New Year, please go to the chat box and click the link and register right away, right now, immediately. Okay, so to secure yourself a precious seat to our webinar session. As you uh, as you know, our seats are limited, so please hurry up and register for our next webinar sessions. Okay, please. Uh, so next session we will talk about introduction to futures concept. Uh, CC, can help me click the next slide? <laughs> All no. right. So that is the last slide. So as uh, um, as moderator, I'd like to uh, draw close to this uh, webinar. Thank you so much, CC, for tuning in online to share with us uh, yeah. how do we do uh, spread trading. I guess today many of you are, uh, are introduced to a new way of how you can do trading without going into one direction. Okay. So with that, I want to thank all of you for tuning in online. Thank you, CC. And uh, may you all have a blessed uh, Chinese New Year for those Chinese that who are celebrating uh, next week. So uh, so have a, a safe travel home and spend a quality time with your family. For those who are not celebrating Chinese New Year, happy holiday. All right. Bye-bye. This is Shen Chu signing off.